back. See, and the music is still the same. Right. Okay, we're gonna we're now we're gonna take a break. You want to say something else right now? Uh -huh. you want me to say something else? Go ahead. I, I want to say also that chicken never gave change out when he showed me how to make the box. As soon as he got up on the ball, I said, "Chicken, first customer." We started working. I said, "How much are you gonna charge you? What's the price?" He goes out. You don't worry about nothing. Don't jinx nothing. Just work that side. I got this side. He gives me the shit side. He takes the good side. He gives me the side with all the trunks and people falling off the side of the ball. Well, this was this side. He gets that side by the beach where people sit and relaxing. They got a bench. And next thing you know, he's making all the money. And I'm not making none. People are not taking a chance on me. I was just a little young kid with a brand new white clean rig. He had the dirty rig. He had a little strap. It was more equipped. He was doing the shit for a couple of years. So they got the no chicken. And they said, chicken, shine. People were actually lined up. The number guys, the fucking regulars, the school principals, anybody that was on vacation. A lot of people knew him. And if they didn't know him, they knew they liked his pop. They liked his look. They knew he was the real shine man. Right. The chicken used to take care of business up here. Nobody else could really shine in his territory. Okay, he would so chase guys off the ball. And he told me, oh, it's 15 cents, but you never give change. I said, what do you mean? He goes, nobody gets changed. What don't you understand? <laughs> I said, what do you, wait, I said, there's people up here that are the school teachers I know, and you guys, my mother's, the, my friend's father's, and I said, I got to, you know, hey, yeah, you want to make money? No change. He, I said, what if the guy gives a dollar? Keep the dollar. Tell him, tell him you ain't got no change. Dig in your pocket, smile, and say, I gave the change to the last customer. See, folks, this is why when Al called me at 10.15, he said, can you make it out to Coney Island uh, by around noon and meet me at Cha-Cha's? I jumped in that shower. Because <laughs> this is okay. exciting stuff. There you go. Uh, let's now let's take a, a break and then we'll uh, we'll see what's happening at this location. So uh, fun, folks. Let's 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 shut our MP3 recorder right now. Okay, yeah, we're back and we're inside Cha Cha's right now. We're actually there's a, there's a, a stage set up over here, Cha Cha's Club Atlantis, and we are with the director of uh, we with the director of the film. Uh, uh, director of the film uh, Shoe Shine Chicken, and uh, why don't you hold the okay? And we're going to meet with the director. Hello, and we're stepping out again. Uh, we're stepping out again. But, uh, I don't want to get I don't want to get too much into the wind here. We're coming out through the bar area, and we're going to meet with the director in a moment. I don't want to get too far into the wind. I don't want him to come. Al, can you bring him back? Okay, yeah, let me, uh, well, it's a little hard to do because we're kind of moving around. Oh, don't go too far now. Come on back. Yeah, but then we're in the wind. Okay, a lot, okay, here we go. Uh, your name is? My name is Fernando Cuestas. And you're the director? I'm the director of Shisha and Chicken, yes. And how did you come to this place today? And uh, at what point are you in the film? And a little bit of your background. Any, any of that in any order? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a New York-based filmmaker. been making films for the past... Uh, 12 years or so, um, just commercial and, and artistic stuff, and I heard a story from my friend Al and Eloise who brought me into the, uh, the project. Uh, both of them explained to me uh, how much the story meant to them, and it's based on a real life um, told from the heart story about kids uh, trying to make it out on boardwalk in Coney Island in 1963. So, um, so I, I liked the story, I felt there was something I could bring to it and make something special out of, and that's how I got involved. And how long you been, uh, how long has this been shooting now? Because I, I saw a couple of quick things on YouTube, again, Shoe Shine Chicken at YouTube, it sounded great, some great uh, music happening there. Uh, how long has this been in production now? Well, this is, we started shooting probably last September, um, uh, all the way through now, but they've been off and on like months where, because this is a very independent project, there's very uh, little money involved, we're kind of like putting in our own time. So it's whenever we've been able to kind of like uh, pick it up and, and keep it going and giving it the, its due time to make it, you know, a special project, because that's how we feel about it. How do you, how do you, how, and how long, how do, you, how do you go about finding the money for, for this sort of thing? Well, uh, Brooklyn yeah. is, even though it's a large area, it's really tight knit. So how do you, how do you bring it all together? Well, right now it's been the three, the three of us, Eloise, myself, and Al, been putting our time and money so when I say money it's kind of like our time because I mean we, we do work for a living we make uh, I do commercial projects but I don't take my time to, to edit to shoot this it's time that I would normally charge other people but I'm not charging anywhere because it's my project and, and I want to give it make it something special and something that, uh, that we could all kind of like use and benefit and and actually have something uh, connected to us that, that we all believe in 
And so that's that's what I mean when I say time and money. It's kind of like we're all putting our time and money, and it could, if this was a real project, it would, you know, the budget would probably be a lot more than what it actually is. But I mean, I mean, we're we're you're buying food for people. We're we're trying to treat people as well as they can when they come down and help out. And that's kind of like where a lot of money is. Sometimes travel, sometimes buying props. I mean, I brought some stuff. Alex brought some stuff. You know, Louise brought some of her own stuff. And we've all just been kind of like banding together to make this happen. What are you trying to accomplish today with Cha Cha? Which uh, I know you're going to be speaking with the boss in a little while. What are you hoping to get done here today and, oh, and yeah. set the shot that you're hoping to do here? It's a very simple scene. It's a very short scene, but it's uh, an important scene where Al is remembering the past and the present. Because a lot of the, the majority of the film takes place in the past in 1963, but we also cut that forward to present day where Al now is the uh, is an older man by the age that he is now, and he's kind of like beginning to remember again. Uh, you know, his friends and the people that he knew back in 1963, and then we cut back from 1963 to the present where we can see that Al is, uh, is still affected by, by all the things that happened to him when he was uh, a child. And uh, when do you think, do uh, you have any finish date, any day that you, well, when do you think you'll be wrapping? Well, I mean, the, the edit is just, How close about, is just about done. We're thinking, we're doing some pickup shots just to finish up the, the, the movie to make it tighter. And this is one of the more kind of like more more kind of like solid scenes that we have to just finish up and put in there. So I'm hoping after this is done and I can throw it into the movie, we could pretty much be done with this by September, I'd say, or, or later on this month, and say that we have something that we can start sending out and showing people and and, and getting uh, you know people excited about it. You know? Okay, again, because you're talking about September, our, uh, we're recording today on August 5th, 2011. Uh, this program will probably not air on audiobookradio.net until sometime in late September. Okay. Uh, and then if it goes on to local uh, New York metropolitan area radio here, it'll be sometime in October. So right now, if it, let's kind of look, putting it all in a place in, in order somehow. So right now, as you're as we're speaking, you're not set to uh, finish up. You're, you're getting close to wrapping. But by the time this hits, you may be wrapped. We'll pretty much be done. We'll have a finished film that people will be hopefully watching or beginning to watch uh, at a film festival somewhere in the city and somewhere outside the city too. Okay, as many film festivals. As, as many, we're probably we're going to send out to anybody who's willing to, to look at it and give it a, cheer, a shot. And we really wanted to kind of like have a wide appeal, um, not just in New York, being how it's about Coney Island and New York City, but I mean, I, Coney Island is kind of like very related to the rest of the world. A lot of people come here from all over the world to to enjoy it and to experience it. So I think um, it, it would have more of a wide appeal, not just to people in New York, but just around the country and to other parts of the world. Well, I'm, I'm trying to say a bit of a Brooklyn chauvinist, uh, and I really do feel that people around the road really get into Brooklyn, New York. There are a lot of Brooklyns in, in the country. I think there's one in North Carolina, and there's one in Mississippi, California. But, I'm but this, that, is, yeah. this is the Brooklyn, and I, and I kind of feel people I mean, want to say, Exactly, but I, I've always felt that like Brooklyn have, has like a, an effect on the entire world and a lot of people from all over the world. I mean, you had that, that Japanese kid who was, who was uh, winning all those hot dog contests for yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. And, and Joey Chestnut. Yeah, though. yeah, no, but I mean, that kid was just doing it for like years straight and he was giving a name to Japan, but I mean, people from Japan would be interested in coming over here just based on that kid and just other parts of Asia too. So it's not like, it's just about Brooklyn and Coney Island, it's about Coney Island and Japan Asia, anybody who's interested. And, 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 the, and the Japanese gentleman, the Kobayashi, I think. Kobayashi. Yeah, Kobayashi, that's Kobayashi. Right. He was banned because he got a little crazy. Uh, Joey Chestnut. I don't know. I, I, think, I don't think they should ban him. I think should, but, they should but he was on, he, 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 There was a contract. He had a contract with Nathan's. And I now he, he actually did it with witnesses on a rooftop in Brooklyn someplace on July 4th. And he actually beat Chestnut. That's, that's pretty official. cool. That's great. I wish it was just official. I wish they would just let him compete. And if he's going to lose, let him lose fair and square. If he's going to win, let him win fair and square. Right. And they shouldn't they shouldn't exclude him from the competition. I really feel he should be in there. Okay, is there a website or anything? Let's go to Al. Shoeshinechicken.com. Okay, shoeshinechicken.com. Yeah. And, uh, and so we're going to update it. We have just a trail up there and, and just very minimal stuff at the moment. But we're going to try to just throw some stuff up there once, uh, once we start going into the festivals and, and things like that. Right. You know? Al, uh, you must feel pretty good about this thing. You grew up with this, is it, it, it coming up as a child, and knowing these, knowing these folks, and you actually worked with uh, Shoe China Chicken, yeah. and, uh, and here you are. This must be really a turn on for you. Yeah, this is something really special for me because this is the first thing I can say that I, uh, you know, I put.
put it together, man. I was the originator. I'm the creator. I'm the fucking writer. You know, I'm, uh, I'm holding the whole together. I've got a good team working with me here, and I'm very proud to say that. And uh, we've got a good staff. We've got good actors. We've got people that never acted before in their life in this movie. And they did a superb job. People were saying, where'd you get these people? They think they came from Hollywood. A couple of them came from agents. Some of them were just friends of friends, family members. And we put a nice package together of some fantastic acting and some writing. Me and Fernando wrote it together. And uh, uh, basically I wrote it and then he put it in format for shooting purposes. So of course he's got to get writing credit too. And uh, he's got a lot to do with this movie by making it happen. And so do I. And, uh, and so does everybody else. Everybody else is doing what they could do. Oh, Louise is a big part of this there. She's been producing it and acting in it. And, uh, uh, and it's all your And these are dedicated people. And it's my dream. It's coming true. Right, right. I told them the story. They liked it. I told the story to a few other people just to tell them not looking to shoot it. And the more I told them, the more people liked it. And I said, you know what? I'm going to shoot that baby. I'm going to put that thing into action and see what happens. And I looked around, I searched around. And uh, you got Fernan the guy. F Fernando and Eloise and Yewa were, were uh, showing a strong interest in it. I said, well, let's get strong with it. Let's go. Okay, so I'm going to I'm gonna shut the machine sure. now. And you're, you're going in to speak to somebody there. And then we'll take a break. And then uh, we'll come on back and, uh, and finish up. Okay, uh, again, you're listening to New York City Patients. But we're not in New York City. Proper. We're in the city of Brooklyn. On the, the, the third, the, 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 the third, real the real Brooklyn. Maybe the, I guess either the third or the fourth largest city in America. I think that's still the sign that shows up there. Yeah, pretty the, much. The third or fourth sign. And and Brooklyn used to be its own city. And then by 200 votes, it got it got pulled, kicking, and screaming into in becoming a borough of uh, New York City. Yeah. You were gonna say? Yeah, I want to say also this was originally called the Brooklyn of uh, the borough of churches. There was a like four or five churches. churches on every block. And you know what? There was bars to match the amount of churches. So you figure that out. Yeah. The churches don't drink. <clears throat> the people drink, go to church, they go to church, they come out and they go to drink. So this is a drinking, drink, drinking America, man. This goes way back, way back before Prohibition. People were making moonshine in the hills. This is it. And, okay. Uh, uh, I'm still waiting. Okay. Are we gonna, we're going we're gonna to shut down for a moment. So you, uh, you, know, you were very kind enough to come out here and we're glad to have you on board. Food is on me. You want a steak? You want a lobster? All right, okay. Tell me what you want. You got it, Herb. You You're got the man. You're I'm coming out here and baking in the sun for us, and we appreciate I'm you. Gonna, I'm going to take a lobster break. Here we go. Let's uh, let's take a break. Uh, we're back for just a moment. We're still waiting for. Uh, no, I can't shut it down. <laughs> we're back now, and we're waiting to get word whether these guys can uh, go into cha cha. I hope you're hearing this, folks. But all the way. And with me again, your name is. My name is Stanley Rollison. Stanley J. Rollison, and I wrote the. From the street, coming right, but, together. But in the, in the in the film, you're actually the, uh, the hardware. Or the oh, in the film of Shushan Chicken, I am actually the uh, uh, hardware store manager. That Shushan Chicken came to rob daily for shoe poppers. But you've got a backstory here. You're a Brooklyn. Uh, you're a Brooklyn native. Uh, oh yes, yes. And, uh, and you're a part of a gang. Oh yes. I, I grew up on Warren Street. Back in the uh, early 50s, and um, uh, that was between 3rd and 4th Avenue and Warren Street. And I'm um, a student, I went to John Jay High School, graduated, and I went to uh, City College for a couple of years. But anyway, uh, I went to George West House uh, Vacation. Yes, so uh, that's where I So uh, you're a gang guy? Well, I was a kid, and um, you know, kids did think that they were supposed to do it, but I was there. <laughs> Uh, did, you, did you beat up anybody notable? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of guys got beat up by us. And the name of the gang again is? Soviet. The what? Soviet. Are they still around? The Soviet. This man. This man. This man. You know, I got beat up by the noble laws on Ocean Parkway one day. I was sitting there minding my own business with a friend, and I was not actually sitting on the bench. I was sitting on the back of the bench, the backrest, and the three guys came over, and one stepped up to me, and I'm holding on to the bench, and this guy's roundhousing me four yeah. or five times. And then I didn't go down, I didn't pass out, I didn't, didn't go down. But then afterwards, one of the, the, one of the guys he was with calls him over, and he whispers something in his ear, and he comes, the guy comes over and apologizes to hit the wrong guy. Yeah, uh oh. And then, he, and then he gave me his card, the Noble Oats had a card, and it, the card had a crown on it. And that was the Noble Oats business card. I think the Lords of Flatbush may have been, may have been, uh, the, the Noble Oats. Um, and, and what about gangs in Britain? What about Britain gangs?
make money? No change. He, I said, what if the guy gives a dollar? Keep the dollar. Tell him, tell him you ain't got no change. Dig in your pocket, smile, and say, I gave you change to the last customer. See, folks, this is why when Al called me at 10.15, he said, can you make it out to Coney Island uh, by around noon and meet me at Cha-Cha's? And I jumped in that shower. Because <laughs> this is okay. exciting stuff. There you go. Uh, let's... We're back. See, and the music is still the same. Right. Okay, we're gonna. Now we're now gonna take a break. You want to and, say something else, Anna? Uh -huh. Want me to say something else? Go ahead. I, I want to say also that Chicken never gave change out when he showed me how to make the box. As soon as he got up on the ball, I said, "Chicken, for his customer, we started working." I said, "How much are you gonna charge you? What's the price?" He goes out. You don't worry about nothing. Don't jinx nothing. Just work that side. I got this side. He gives me the shit side. He takes the good side. Now let's take a break and then we'll we'll see what's happening at this location. So uh, fun, folks. Let's 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 shut our MP3 recorder right now. I'm the Okay, yeah, we're back and we're inside Cha Cha's right now. We're actually there's a there's a, a stage set up over here, Cha Cha's Club Atlantis, and we are with the director of uh, we're with the director of the film, uh, uh, director of the film uh, Shoe Shine Chicken, and he's on the side with all the drunks and people falling off the side of the ball. Well, this was this side. He gets that side by the beach where people sit and relax and they got a bench. And next thing you know, he's making all the money. And I'm not making none. People are not taking a chance on me. I was just a little young kid with a brand new white clean rig. He had the dirty rig, he had a little strap, it was more equipped. He was doing the shit for a couple of years. So they got to know chicken. And they said, chicken, shine. People were actually lined up. The number guys, the fucking regulars, the school principals, anybody was on vacation. A lot of people knew him. And if they didn't know him, they knew they liked his pop. They liked his look. They knew he was a real shine man. Right. The chicken used to take care of business up there. Nobody else could really shine in his territory. Okay, he would so chase guys off the ball and he told me out. Oh, it's 15 cents, but you never give change. I said, what do you mean? He goes, nobody gets changed. What don't you understand? <laughs> I said, what do you wait? I said, there's people up here that are the school teachers I know. And the guys, my mother's, the, my friend's father's. I said, I got 